We're at the part of the show where we look at growing figs in cold climates. And by the way, if you've ever thought it's way too cool for you to grow figs, I recently had an email from Kirk in Whitehorse, Yukon, who's eager to see how figs do in his long summer days because he knows gardeners in Alaska with figs. Now, in today's segment, we're in for a real treat because I had a fascinating chat with Will Pananis from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And Will got in touch with me about five years back with his fig overwintering method, and I'll let him tell us all about it. Now, here is my chat with Will. I have on the line with me Will Pananis from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And in my last email exchange with Will... He told me he harvested about 800, 900 figs last season, and he's got a great overwintering method. So, Will, welcome to the Bigs on Figs segment, and thanks for joining us on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Steve. Why don't we start out, Will, uh, just by talking about what your climate's like. What are your growing conditions? Well, we're we're in uh, growing hardiness zone 6B. I have about... 10 fig trees now that are in ground here in, in south central Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I plant them close to the house and I take advantage of the solar latent heat from the wall of the house. And I, I really try to harvest the water from the gutter overhead, mm-hmm. which is very important to the fig tree. And I also find Putting it close to the wall uh, makes electricity e- easily accessible so that I can have some warmth in the wintertime. Okay. And in a minute, I'll ask you about the winter, but why don't we also talk about how you got into growing figs? Well, th- that's interesting. My, my f- through my father and grandfather and maternal grandfather, hmm. they both grew figs. Now, my maternal grandfather, it's interesting, he always wrapped his figs. My father uh, and mother, who were great, oh, my, they had, uh, they had a farmette, um, and we grew 50 fruit trees, and we had grapes, and we had uh, a large uh, vegetable garden and flowers, and we had a date tree, and and we had this fig tree, but uh, we we were uh, we operated a family business, and our big biggest season was Christmas. So w- just when you're supposed to be wrapping your tree for winter, you were too busy trying to maintain your business. So I would witness every every winter, you know, when the leaves fell off, there there were. Dozens and dozens of of figs on the plant that never had that never had gotten to maturity, hmm. and so that was an impetus for me to say, I if I'm if I want to enjoy fresh figs, I need to wrap the this tree up. So I started wrapping, and and by the way, my father's tree uh, this year is. 70 years old, so I still have uh, a, a, a cutting from it, and I have mm. a, a big tree, and I enjoy it. Um, and, and of course, so I started wrapping all my trees. And then we started to get some wild winters where we had periods of zero degrees, and they, and they extended for several days. And that's too much for a fig tree. It will freeze to the ground. So I said to myself, and and that's what brought about this heat tube idea, Mm -hmm. I need to put some sort of heat. And I did experiment with, golly, I went out and got uh, these heaters you put in your gutter to keep them, uh, keep ice from building up in your gutter. Yes. That didn't work very well. And I started ending up using a light bulb. Uh, so the first year, I just used a regular light bulb. And that spring, when I uncovered the tree, um, I, w- I was in shock when I saw a hole burnt into the burlap. In other words, I had I had pulled the tr- 
trimmed the tree, pulled it, pruned it, pulled it together, wrapped it in burlap, and put this uh, this light bulb underneath. Well, it burned a hole in there, and I'm thinking, wow. I don't want to burn a, burn a tree down. So I came up with this idea of a heat tube where it would enclose this light bulb. Now, what wattage am I using? I'm using pretty much at this point 60 watt incandescent. Of course, you can't use LED. Right. Uh, incandescent, 60 watt, and I use rough service, which is a which is a light bulb that the filament inside is supported. Uh, it has an extra support in there so that it's rough service because you don't want the light bulb going out in the middle of a freeze. Oh. So um, I I get a uh, an exhaust tube from a hot water heater, which is three inches in diameter, mm -hmm. and I get a uh, porcelain socket, and I attach this to the inside of the tube, and I screw my light bulb in, and when I turn the light on, it produces a column of warmth, and I put I attach this with a, a, a cord of some sort right against the burlap that I wrap right around the, the first wrap around the tree. Okay. And um, so, so that's how I got started be, through my my father and maternal grandfather, and then had endeavored to have fresh figs and knew I needed to add warmth. And and for oh golly for many many years now it has worked handsomely and um, uh, if the tree gets I have a couple of big trees mm -hmm. that that extend up ten eleven twelve feet I have to use I use a hundred watt bulb in that okay so um, it's very interesting but it works and you uh, what switches on the light bulb. Does it only go on in cold weather, uh, or is it on all the time? No, uh, I only turn it on. I, I put it. I, I have this all set out uh, extension cords, and I only turn it on when the temperature gets down to fifteen degrees above zero, and then I keep it on twenty-four-seven uh, until the temperature comes back up to twenty degrees. And then mm. I turn the bulb off. And and so now you have, you said, about 10 trees like this? And... About 10 trees, yes. I like to go with the closed eye varieties because they tend to um, not sour. We had uh, mm. a fall, of course, you know, about three years ago that it was so humid and rainy and warm. And it soured, oh my gosh. It split my figs, unbelievable, but it soured them, uh, be, uh, in, especially in the ones that that had a, more of an open eye. Right. Will, thank you so much for telling us about how you're getting figs in, in south-central Pennsylvania, and I just love the idea of the heat tube. Well, that was my chat with Will Pananas from Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania. And if you look on my blog, you'll find photos from Will that I posted in 2015. The post is titled Making a Heat Column for In-Ground Fig Plants. And that's at stephenbiggs.ca. Look up the Bigs on Figs blog. And that's an old post, but 